What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmedesign.com and in this lesson I'm going to be showing you a few cool techniques that you can use to create surreal looking architecture in Photoshop. Alright guys, so today I want to show you a pretty cool trick that uh, is often used in matte painting and it's a cool way to manipulate some architecture in Photoshop. Um, so you'll see here I have this image of a, a pagoda ready to go and uh, let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is make a copy of your original layer just by pressing Command J on the keyboard and we're going to want to get rid of the sky. So because the sky is fairly solid, it's mostly blue, we can use this technique that I like to use just coming up to the select menu and choosing color range. From there you can use the uh, eyedropper and just click on an area of blue here. But if you want to add additional colors, you come over here to the side and click the little eyedropper with a plus that says add to sample. Once you've done that, you can actually begin clicking all these other colors in the background and it will just continue to add these to your selection. So using this image on the right, the little preview window, um, I kind of have a, a little guide as to what areas I have selected. Um, the areas in white and the areas that are not selected, the areas in black. So this is kind of the perfect image to use this uh, little trick for here. Alright, so once you have most of that selected, you can come here to the slider that says fuzziness. As you move it around, you'll see that you get either a more solid or less solid image. And that's pretty good. That's as close as we're going to get now. Um, so go ahead and just hit OK. Now that you have an active selection, we actually want to add to our selection a little bit. So to do this, I'm just going to press W on the keyboard to get my magic wand. Then I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on a few of these other areas that I haven't selected yet just to continue to add to the selection even more. Now that we have a pretty good selection, I'm going to go ahead and invert it by pressing Command Shift plus I on the keyboard and then coming down here and clicking on the layer mask icon. Now if I turn off the background layer, you'll see that we have a pretty good selection. Okay, um, the next thing that we're going to do is select our mask layer and press Command J to make a copy of it. And we're going to turn off that first copy that we made. I'm going to zoom in and switch over to my brush tool by just pressing B on the keyboard. And if you guys aren't familiar with some of these shortcuts, um, definitely go ahead and check out the cheat sheet that I've created that comes with the Design Fundamentals cheat sheet that you can sign up for and download for free. It gives you all of the keyboard equivalents of your tools and, and it's a nice little setup of your toolbar and everything like that and it shows you what keyboard commands control what tools. Um, so it's just a good time saver that comes with the design fundamental cheat sheets. So once I have my black brush selected, I just went in and painted out that uh, weird little antenna thing on top because I just want the buildings. Alright, so from this point, we basically have one silo layer and then another one without the top. So what we're going to do now is select the top layer and press Command J to make one more copy of it. Come down and select just one layer below. And now we can move these towers up. And I'm just doing this while holding the Shift key so that it will move it directly up, you know, straight up and down. It won't go off to the side or anything like that. So remember, if you hold the Shift key, it'll keep things in line. Now you'll notice that I'm, I'm losing a lot of this. I'm not seeing it right now. So what I need to do is extend the canvas. I'm going to come up here to the image menu and choose canvas size. And then click this little down arrow where it says anchor in this toolbox here showing all these arrows. And that's just going to make it so that when I add height to my document, it's only going to add it above. If I left it in the center, it would add it on the top and the bottom. And if I click the up arrow, it would only add canvas size to the bottom. So let me show you what I mean. If I change this to 4800 pixels, now it's added those pixels to the top of the image rather than the top and the bottom. Okay, so from here, I'm just going to select my marquee tool, M on the keyboard, and drag a large rectangular box around the selection. Make sure that you still have your layer mask selected, and with black set to your foreground color, press Alt Option plus Delete on the keyboard and that will fill your mask with your foreground color. From here, um, press Command-T on the keyboard to do a free transform, and then hold down the Shift and Option keys as you drag one of the four corners inwards, 
and that's going to make it so that you shrink from the center. All right, and let me just take a step back here. If I do that again, a free transform, if I just hold shift, it's great because it constrains the proportions, but it's moving it way to the side. Instead, what we want to do is move it right where it is and just shrink it down. So that is why I'm holding the alt the that is why I'm holding the alt option key and shift at the same time. All right, so go ahead and reduce that and then I'm just going to move it up a little bit. <clears throat> All right, and then you'll see what you'll see where we're going. We already have kind of a cool effect here, but I'm just going to select my brush tool again and paint out these edges that kind of poke out from the sides. All right, there you go. And from here, um, you know, you can continue to build this up and you can also come in here and do a free transform and maybe, you know, use the perspective. And I'm just, again, holding shift and alt and shift on the keyboard and dragging in from the top right anchor with perspective. All right, and that just makes it look a little bit more realistic and fit in the scene even more. So again, you can continue to repeat this process, adding a few more floors to the pagoda if you'd like, and just repeating the process where you uh, continue to move it behind your previous layer and mask it and add more room to the canvas as needed. All right, and this is used a lot if you want to if you wanted to fake a scene or, or you know fake a building that doesn't exist. Um, it's a cool way that you can create some kind of surreal architecture um, and make it look even more you know, kind of realistic and, and crazy than it does in real life. So now I'm going to select these three layers and press Command E on the keyboard to merge them together. And I'm going to turn on my original background layer just so you can see the before and after. Now what happens if I want the sky to extend all the way up here? Well, I'm going to make a copy of my background layer, again by selecting it and pressing Command J. And then with my marquee tool selected, I'm going to create a box that covers most of the top of the image and a little bit of this blue sky here so that it overlaps. From there, go up to the Edit menu and choose Fill. From there, we're going to go Content Aware and let Photoshop do its thing while it tries to um, extrapolate the pixels that are here and kind of figure out uh, you know, what it will fill this in with. And it will most likely just be our blue sky color. There you go. All right, so then I'm just going to deselect by pressing Command D on the keyboard. And again, I'm going to select these top three layers just by clicking the background copy, holding shift, and then selecting my topmost layer, and pressing Command E to merge them once again. So now you can see the before and after. And actually, let me just fill in the sky on the original image so that it looks a little bit better. I'm just going to do the same thing by dragging the marquee tool and making a rectangle, coming up to the edit menu and choosing fill, content aware. All right, and this is a great way that you can, you know, this is a great technique that you can use in photo manipulations or, you know, any kind of compositing and, and things like that. And uh, matte painting, as I said in the beginning, is, is another one. All right, so now you have your original image and after. So it's a pretty cool effect, and I just wanted to share this with you guys because I think I might be using this for a project or for an upcoming image that I'm working on, and I just thought it was kind of a cool technique. Now. One last thing that I wanted to try is to maybe um, actually reduce the is, is to actually reduce the size of this on the top. So I'm just going to squish it down a little bit like that, just so that it looks a little bit more um, in perspective, like we want. All right, and again, before our original image and after. So I hope that you guys have found this technique to be useful in this Photoshop tutorial video. And if you have, please go ahead and like it, subscribe, and be sure to comment below. And also go ahead and sign up for our email list, guys. We have a new contest running right now called the Design Better Contest that gives you the chance to not only ask me any design-related questions, but you also have the chance to win a design critique one-on-one -on -one from me, where I will ask you for a project that you're working on that you may be struggling with, and I will do a video to work on your project and show you customized tips just for you. So be sure to check that out in the link below. Our Design Better contest is running now through the end of the month. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.